Let's see what it takes to install lighting in a no-scale die-cast vehicle using super bright, super long life LEDs from Evan Designs. This video will show you some of the techniques I've developed, the tools I use, and hopefully some helpful information. While the subject here is a bus, these methods can be used or adapted for other vehicles too. At the outset, understand that while this isn't rocket science, you do need some basic skills and at least a nodding acquaintance with connecting electrical wires the right way. Here's a look at the tools I use. There's no hard and fast rules. You may find others that work better for you. The tools shown here include wire strippers. I use a couple I bought at an aviation event, but you can use any other type. A set of jeweler's screwdrivers in both flat and Phillips blades. Notice I have screwdrivers of each type of the larger handle for times when more turning force is needed. Cobalt drill bits. Now while die cast metal is usually a mix of zinc and aluminum, it's pretty dense after having been forced into the mold under extreme pressure. Regular drill bits dull quickly. In reality, you don't need to spring for a full set. I seldom use anything bigger than those on the right side. A hand chuck, if you can find one. I've had this one for many years and find it handy when enlarging openings in die cast vehicles. You can use a power hand drill or even a drill press, but I've found the hand chuck allows the most control when drilling relatively thin material. On the thicker stuff, you're going to want some power. Cutting pliers. I find it useful to have the two sizes since the smaller pair works better in tight quarters you sometimes encounter when you're putting LEDs in small scale die cast vehicles. And a hobby knife with a number 11 blade. And trust me, you'll also want to have some spare blades on hand. A small pair of needle nose pliers are handy for lots of things, including when you have to bend the head of one of the LEDs. The Evan Designs LEDs can be bent up to 90 degrees, if it is done very carefully, right behind the part that illuminates. You're going to want tweezers, both straight and curved. They've proven at least very useful to me for simply holding things or placing objects inside, such as an LED. This is a spring-loaded center punch, and I picked it up pretty cheap at a Harbor Freight. It's proven invaluable in making a starting spot when you're drilling holes through the die cast metal. You just press down on it very hard. That triggers a spring driven plunger that drives the point into the material. The one I haven't shown here is a soldering iron. I use a 40 watt model as well as a solder and the power drill. I've tried, as I said, to use a drill press to make holes, but I have a lot more control with a handheld drill. The glues I use are Crazy Glue or Super Glue. There are a lot of different brands and types though. Choose one that's thicker than the standard variety it's easier to work with. Quick Grip Glue, especially helpful in attaching the LEDs, but also good general glue when two odd materials need to be solidly joined. And good old Elmer's White Glue. That's used to reattach clear plastic like headlight lenses because it doesn't craze the plastic. And it also dries clear. Sometimes you can use it to fabricate a lens in head and tail light openings. The vehicle we're going to attack is a school bus die cast, about 8 inches long. That would make the scale somewhere around 150. I think of it as looking at a real school bus from 50 feet away. Now, when we're done, the bus will be sporting 13 Evan Designs LEDs. Your very first step should be to cover the top of the vehicle with masking tape because this will reduce scratching that can occur as you work on it. Now we'll disassemble the bus. Put the small parts in a container as they're removed. Never toss them into the work surface. You're almost surely going to lose something that way. This die cast has one of those spring-loaded pull-back motors in it. I like to remove these. Snap out the motor unit, carefully pry it apart and remove the gears in the spring. Then snap it back together again carefully and reinstall it in the chassis. The plastic window insert needs to be removed and modified in the upper corners because you have to make room for the installation of a couple of the LEDs. And also the last two seats have to be removed again to make room for the LEDs. Both these modifications were done with a razor saw. The rear door of the model is made to open, but the mounting post blocks a spot for one of the LEDs, so I removed it with a Dremel tool. The brace on the door also has to be trimmed off as much as possible, and then the door later will be glued back on the model. It no longer will open. Now we're going to make some holes for the LEDs in the rear of the bus. Use a spring-loaded center punch and make a place to start the drill, being very careful to get it as centered as possible. Then I use the handheld power drill on low speed to make the holes. Use the 5 64ths bit for the holes for the 1.8 millimeter LEDs that go at the top of the rear of the bus. Use that same bit to make two holes for the LEDs to be installed above the windshield on the front of the bus. 
Back on the rear, use a 1 8 drill bit for 3 millimeter sizes to be installed to represent the turn signals and taillights. For the headlights and parking lights, first you're going to have to carefully remove the plastic lenses and be sure to save them. They're going to be reinstalled after some modification. Use a Dremel tool or a series of drill holes and a hobby file to make a slot in which to mount the headlights and the parking light LEDs in each fender. Those headlight lenses you took off must have their mounting tab removed. Be sure to trap that lens with your finger, a piece of masking tape or something to keep it from flying off to oblivion when you cut the tab. The silver paint must now be scraped off the back side of them. They'll be glued back into place once the LEDs are mounted. At this point you put the clear window piece back into the proper position and we're ready to install the LEDs. I use Evan Designs Universal Types because they can operate in a wide range of voltages, AC, DC, or DCC. Experience has shown me these things have outstanding reliability and they're super bright on top of being very easy to install. They come in a bunch of colors and as both solid lights and self-flashers. And by the way, this die cast is large enough to provide plenty of space to fasten the bridge rectifiers associated with the universal type LED from Evan Designs. For this bus, I have used 1.8 millimeter warm white LEDs for headlights, 1.8 millimeter normal flash orange for parking lights, 1.8 millimeter normal flash reds for the top lights front and rear. The rear lower reds and orange turn signal lights are 3 millimeter LEDs with the top filed down almost to the electrodes inside so that just a little bit of the plastic housing protrudes from the hole. The wires for the LEDs are routed in such a way that they are minimally visible from outside the bus when it's all done. And be sure to cover the surrounding windows with masking tape to avoid smearing glue on them during this process. I have found, by the way, quick grip glue is the best for holding the LEDs in place. But don't glue the LED lens itself. Instead, glue the wires just back of the lens. Once the LED is in place, you can put a tiny drop of super glue on the point where the lens contacts the body of the car just to keep it in place and apply that glue with the pointed tip of a toothpick. You're going to find toothpicks a great aid in applying glue inside the model body. Buy the sturdiest ones you can find and trust me, get a bunch of them. For the stop sign, a hole the size of a 1.8 millimeter normal flash red LED is drilled in the center. Then the LED is glued in place, the wires bend to match the shape of the stop sign support arm and eventually they're painted red. Note that you have to pass the LED through the slot in the side of the bus before gluing it to that sign. Time to reinstall the seats. Be sure you put in the stop sign and engage it on the post on the seat insert. Once you have the LEDs in place, plumber's putty is applied to the back sides of them to minimize flashback to the interior of the bus. And to do this, you need to temporarily power up each LED so you can be sure you've sealed it as best you can. The bridge rectifiers are glued to various spots on the bottom of the seat insert. Next, all the wires have to be connected. Now we're going to install 13 LEDs. That means 26 wires to be consolidated into two connections of 13 each. And what you have to make certain is that you don't connect both wires from any single LED to the same bundle. Be sure to solder all these connections and protect them with either electrical tape or even better, heat shrink tubing. I use tubing in 1 16th and 3 32nds of an inch sizes. This is a good time to glue the rear escape door back where it belongs. I also glued a piece of clear plastic inside for reinstalling the door to represent the windows that are absent in the bare model. Okay, now you're going to drill a hole in the chassis and a two conductor quick connector is inserted. Be sure to tie a relief knot on what would be the inside of the chassis so that wire can't be pulled loose during handling on the layout. Now, if you don't want to use a quick connector or don't have one, this could simply be a two conductor piece of wire. Solder the connector to the leads from the various LEDs that you bundled up earlier and again use heat shrink tubing or electrical tape to insulate the connections. Then the chassis gets put back on the bottom of the bus. It can be tricky to do this because you have to reinstall the two doors. Finish work includes white glue applied with a toothpick to make clear lenses for the top lights on the front and rear and it takes about 24 hours for that to dry properly. I found it better to make several light applications rather than a big glob on each of them at one time. Once that glue dries, the lenses can be painted red. The lower rear turn signals and flashing lights are also painted in the appropriate colors. Put a drop of super glue on the stop sign to prevent movement because allowing it to move can break the LED wires. And lastly, we put the headlight lenses back into place. 
I like to use white glue for this since it dries clear and as I said earlier it won't craze the plastic. If you work slowly and carefully the end result of your labors can be very rewarding. Placed on your layout with only a few figures this vehicle can create an eye-catching mini scene. It's also likely along the way you may develop some techniques not shown in this video or you may have some questions you want to ask me and if you do I'd appreciate hearing about them. Contact me by email with any questions, comments, or whatever. Thanks for watching.